Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to talk about some output options in layout. So this video specifically is for SketchUp, uh, the new release of SketchUp in layout, 2023.1 or newer. There are some new options in layout that we're going to dive into that give you a lot more control on how much detail you see both on the screen and in your output. We're hopping and talk about it right now. All right, so I have a very simple thing here. <laughs> it's a little model. Uh, I got a photo. I didn't pull this off Google. I actually found this uh, locally. Um, something that nobody can complain about me using their image without, you know, proper authorization, that sort of thing. But anyhow, uh, yeah, so I have two main things on here. Um, let's grab my toolbars, bring them over here. And you'll see right here what I got is a SketchUp model. And then up here I have an image. So this is going to be referred to as an image. This is actually going to be called a viewport. So it is showing a SketchUp model, but this is a viewport. Uh, we have control. You can see, I mean, this is it's not your screen. It's not you, it's me. I can see very jagged lines going down the roof line here. And I can see this guy... This guy's, this guy's, he's out of focus. He's fuzzy. So um, I did want to point out how this works with both an image and a viewport. Something you will notice, I put a couple of dimensions on here. Uh, if I zoom in on this dimension, I'm, I'm never going to get a jagged line along this four because the, the artifacts that I add inside of layout are always going to be... Uh, uh, vector imagery, so like the things like text and that sort of stuff, is not going to be effects, affected by what we're about to look at. What we're going to look at is specific to things like this, viewports and images. And everything we're going to look at is right here under Document Setup. Go into Document Setup, and you're going to see here under Rendering, I have two options here, Edit Resolution and Output Resolution. They're going to, end, in the end, they're going to do the same thing, just two different places. The first one, edit resolution, is what shows up on the screen. The other option, output resolution, is what goes out to the printer, out to PDF, and whatever export you have set up. So we're going to go through both of these. Uh, the easiest one to visualize, of course, is right here on the screen. So we'll talk about edit resolution first. I'll slide this over just so I can see everything. Um, so again, viewports versus images, two separate settings. And for each of these, I have low, medium, and high. So I, I mean, we're going to kind of skip over medium, just go meet low to high. Medium is going to be somewhere in the middle. Um, this is important for viewports. <clears throat> we're talking about the resolution of raster rendered viewports. Okay, so that's important because if over here I have my viewport set to vector, right, I'm going to see clean lines because they're vector lines, right? They're They're created from one point to another, so I'm not gonna have jagged lines on a vector viewport. This setting over here is gonna affect when I have something set to raster. So we're gonna set that back to raster. Now I got my beautiful, ugly lines. The nice thing about, so why does this even exist? This exists for performance reasons. What draws quickest to the screen? The quickest thing to draw to the screen is a raster image and a low quality raster image is gonna show up fastest of all. So this is, I mean, again, super simple, right? Because I'm showing you in a quick video, so I have to have this kind <laughs> of be very performant. But if I have a huge model or multiple viewports overlaid on top of here, it can be very slow to do things like zoom in, zoom out, pan, or update. So by giving the option to change the quality here, I can go from low to high. We'll see the difference right away. Look at that. See, it doesn't look, from right here, it looks about the same as that vector viewport did. If I zoom in far enough, I will eventually see the jaggies and the blurriness, but in general, uh, it's it's it looks nicer. But like I said, the reason this isn't always on by default is this is more pixels to draw to the screen. So this will end up getting slower than what I would see with a low quality viewport. It really is up to you. If you like working in raster, uh, then set this however you like, knowing that the most performant for the biggest, ugliest, scariest model you have, 
Having this set to raster and having viewport set to low is going to be the most performant. Up here, same thing, images, I can change it from low to high. Ooh, look at that, look at that, that, that weird looking fella is so much more in focus now. I like him better like this. Let's keep him at low. But you can see, same thing. Again, if you have images imported, put on the screen. Some people import things like notes and that kind of thing that's text and import that as an image, that's fine. It's obviously easier to read if you have it set to higher. But this is the most performant. So generally speaking, when I put on the screen, I want to get them, you know, move around the quickest, but that's going to all depend on the types of models you show and then also what your computer's capable of. Okay, as far as output, output's a whole nother story, right? Because what I show, say on the screen is for performance, output is going to be more about what I'm actually going to get out. So what I did, I actually went and exported three sets of output here. Uh, so we didn't have to wait for them to process. The first one I did was just, let's turn this off, just basically export low resolution. And guess what? It's exactly the same thing. So if I put my low quality output here, my PDF, look at that, side by side. Yeah, pretty much same thing. Uh, this actually looks a little bit uglier even. We got some, some ugly things going on with my colors, but low quality is low quality. So I don't know why you would set this necessarily. I would imagine that in general, you want your output to be a little bit better. Now I have heard people on the forum talk about switching this to high like this and it taking a while to export. And that's totally possible. Uh, high is going to give you a better looking image. Um, the nice thing about a high quality raster render is you're gonna get all the, you know, all the flavor, all the texture from your, your texture, well, textures, <laughs> your materials that you have on here. All the colors, all the subtleties are gonna show up here, whereas like with a vector, not necessarily gonna get that because it'll all be solid colors in the vector output. Now, there is an option here. In here, we have this output override. So this says you like to get those, you know, work in render or in raster. So this set output override says, even if my model is set to raster, Right, so even my viewport is set to raster. When I say export, export in either vector or hybrid anyhow. So here's what that looks like. Here's vector. So I did this, I turned this on and I hit export and here's what I got. So this, even though this viewport is set to raster, when I exported, I still got this vector line drawing. So it's a nice option to have because again, this means with this override set, you can work in the quick, quickest, snappiest uh, method of visualization inside the model, but still get the highest quality outside when you export, uh, whether that's export to PDF or print directly to printer, you're gonna get whatever set here rather than up here. And it's also nice that it was broken out viewports versus images. I don't use a lot of images in layout. My stuff is all viewports and then texture dimensions over top. So. Uh, I don't I don't see that making a big difference for me, but if you do, if you import a lot of images, details, that kind of thing, uh, you have the option of how they show up on screen separate from how they're gonna print out down here. So I hope that, I mean, I know that was probably maybe a lengthier description than some people might would have wanted. Uh, we did, when we did our video for the 23.1 release, several people asked for more detail on this. Like how, how, does, how does that work? What does it look like? Um, you know, anytime somebody says, how do I do that? Or how does that work? How does it look? I'm always thinking, well, you can go try it and then you would know. But failing that, I mean, it's why I have a job, I suppose. This is how that works. So a little more detail for you, some actual real examples and uh, just a, a snapshot of how you could possibly set that right, right. there. <laughs> uh, so generally speaking, I will have mindset to low and keep my models raster in my output and then export high and probably use the override and set the hybrid. But uh, yeah, that's how those work. That's how the, the presets work and hopefully that helped you. Uh, if it, it did work, if you do like it, uh, give me a thumbs up. If you watched this video and thought it was good, uh, give us a like. And if you have any thoughts on how that could be different or maybe you like different settings, Tell us about that down in the comments. 
And of course, I mean, if you don't already subscribe, you just watched eight minutes of video, you should probably subscribe because we got more of this stuff coming out every single week and be notified of all of it if you subscribe. And then finally, just let us know, give us your thoughts. What kind of things should we show on these videos? We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when it's showing something you want to see. Thank you.